song you can all help us sing. And if you don't know it yet, this is a good time to learn it. Yes. Yeah, well, it's a nice song for weather like we've been having. <laughs> Chickens. 
Yeah, he liked chickens, especially when they was proper cooked. And it was this fondness which led to his eventual depreciation of the entire flock. Till finally he was left with only one old rooster. But Lord, honey, what a rooster he was. That thing's about that tall. <laughs> but it's about that tall. That's a big one. He wasn't that. You're stretching well, that, ain't you? Maybe he was on his tippy toes. Maybe he was about that tall. But with them big dom neckers, they get big. Big dom neckers, don't they? They get big. They, he's a big old rooster, and he's proud of himself. You know how old rooster will do, you know, just strutted around. But he may as well not be so plucky, so proud of himself, because he was destined to join his brother roosters up the big hen house in the sky. <laughs> For one Sunday morning, John come in on, from what, you'll know about this, from what he always called a big one. <laughs> Hangover. A big one. He's been on a big one, and he come in, and he is hungry. He said that being on a big one made him hungry. Does it make you hungry? <laughs> One jar of olives with just that old salt water down the bottom. Oh, no. That's it. Yeah. One egg had been in there for a long time. He didn't have no by any weenies. So, so what he did now, he, he, he knows how to take care of himself. I'll, so I'll give John that much. He knows how to take care of himself. So he went out to the chicken lot. See that old rooster strutting around there? Took hold that little old rooster's wing, led him down to the old chopping block. Huh? Oh, well, now. He laid down there, stretched that old scrawny neck out there on what that chopping block. He took his axe and he just cracked that old rooster's head off. Just but don't flop, flop, flop him flop, this way. Flop him that way. <laughs> Put your foot on that, honey. She did that right. She did it real gently. She didn't bruise it. Some some people just slap their foot down on him, you know, and make him not, not even work chicken burger out of it. You know what? <laughs> you, did, you got the touch. About that time, and he chopped that old rooster's head off. John looked over and there laid out a son of himself laid a big old joint snake. Oh, what? I bet y'all got joint snakes out here. They come down off chimney rock down, down on down in here. I bet you got joint snakes. What's a joint snake? Well, they know what it is. I'll tell, we'll tell him. He don't, he act like he don't know. A joint snake is a snake that if you go to hit it with something, like with an ax handle, well, that snake will lay there. It, it'll break up in these little pieces, just sort of bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> and he'll lay there and play snake possum <laughs> till you're good and gone. And then that old snake just put <laughs> yourself back together again and go on his Murray snake you what? Well, now, his Uncle John knowed about joint snakes. So after he chopped that rooster's head off, see that joint snake laying there, he took that axe and just made like he was going to hit it, just for kidding him. Sure enough, it flew apart in all them little pieces. <laughs> but John, he looked around, he found that joint snake's head, huh? and he took it in and he threw it in the kitchen floor. <laughs> well, by nine high past. That old rooster was getting a little bit tender from his constant boiling, boiling, boiling in the pot. But unfortunately, John is getting a little bit tender himself, if you know what I mean. He's been kind of, you know, didn't take no iron height neither, I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, John hears something. Now, he, he said that it sounded like that old rooster was out in the yard crowing, but he knew that couldn't be. Huh. Well, he staggered over to the front door, and he looked down. And there, that joint snake had appropriated that old rooster's head. And honey, it was a crow with all hits night. <laughs> Snake story. With a rooster's head? <laughs> that, now that, that's a side note. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
not a what, feature what, that. What would have happened if that thing had took on a hen's head, you reckon? Well, what do you think it happened? Might have laid eggs. <laughs> no, no, it, it wouldn't been the head. Part. I think you'd have to have oh. more <laughs> nothing about them joint snakes. They ain't no telling what they do. <laughs> joint snakes. Mm -hmm. I've never heard nothing like that in my life. Well, you want to listening. <laughs> I just talked that yeah. right out there. Yeah, I was listening, but I don't swallow everything I hear. That's what I think about me. You know? <laughs> well, you should just about swallow everything that sits in front of you, though, just a bad. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I... Now, I know a little bit about that corn lick. Yeah, yeah we not fill out each other. Oh, we've talked that a while. <laughs> don't, don't let him get yeah. you in trouble, man. Now, no. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with the little corn lick. You know, that for medicinal purposes. <coughs> <coughs> uh, I like <laughs> A little about well about that much corn liquor. I like a little about about that much corn liquor. Four fingers, yeah, in a tub about that. <laughs> <laughs> well now I don't. I tell you, I'll tell you something I know about. Well, we're all waiting. I I tell you, I know about fish. Yeah, I know. Does anybody here like to fish? Huh? Yeah, bunch of you like to fish. You, you like to catch them too, I reckon. Don't you? <laughs> well, I tell you, I like to catch them. And now, have you ever been to Big Moxon Creek down there in Scott County? You never have. Has anybody ever been to Big Moxon Creek? <laughs> you ain't been nowhere, have you? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, it's a good fishing hole down there. Eh? Well, I don't like to tell everybody, but I'll tell you, it's a good fishing hole down there called a green hole. And there's a lot of them big old lumper headed bass in there. Now, they fine looking bass down there. I know you got some good fishing down here, but down there there's some real good fish. And I like to go fishing. The other day I was down there with my old fishing buddy Johnson, Dane, and Gail, and Doofer. We always go down there and go. You took, you took Doofer fishing, didn't you? Well, yes, I took him. Well, I ain't Doofer. seen him for a while. How's he doing? I didn't know. Well, Doofer's doing just fine. Well, I always well, take him Doofer fishing. Doofer fishing, huh? Well, I always take Doofer fishing. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with going Well, no, him. there ain't nothing wrong with taking take Doofer him fishing. fishing. If you Take your dancing home. Well, there ain't, <laughs> well, ain't nothing wrong with Duper. I didn't say there was nothing wrong with Duper. I said, did you well, take well, him fishing? Well, now, he ain't exactly right. He ain't right. exactly right. right. <laughs> but there ain't nothing wrong with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, now, it ain't his fault. No, it ain't. It ain't his fault. See, his mommy dropped him when he's just a baby. Well, now. Well, now, I didn't say she meant to do it. She just dropped him. He always was a squirmy little fella anyway. <laughs> people make fun of Doofy. There's a lot of people do. They make fun of Doofy. And I, it makes me mad. I don't like it myself. i tell you what they do now. A lot of times what they do is, is they'll, they play tricks on him. Well, what they used to do now, they'd put a nickel in one hand and a dime in the other. And they'd hold it out and they'd say, here, Doofy. Here, you take the one you want. <laughs> Doofer would take a nickel every time. Every time. <laughs> and I told him, I said, I got him off of one side there one day. I said, Doofer, honey, I said, they're playing a trick on you. I said, now, don't you know that that nickel, I know the nickel's bigger, but the dime's worth more. Nearly twice as much. <laughs> I tell you, a little education's a dangerous thing. <laughs> well, now, well, I, he said, you know what he told me? He said, I know that. And I said, well, what do you take the nickel for? He said, I believe if I took that dime, they'd quit offering me money. <laughs> Talk about fishing. Just, just let me talk. Okay? Yeah. Now, 
down there, okay, it's a big moccasin creek, green hole I was telling you about. I was up the creek there from Johnson a little ways, and I heard him holler. Well, see, I like to go fishing with Johnson. There ain't no danger of Johnson ever catching any fish. <laughs> but he's fun to go along with just to see what happens. Because, see, Johnson, he's lucky to get his bait back. That's what Johnson, that's the kind of fisherman he is. And I heard him holler, say, oh, come down here to help me. I got a big one. Johnson ain't never caught a big one. I know that. I figured he had a big mud turtle up under the bank there. There's some big mud turtles in there, too. I didn't tell you about them. But now I got down there, and that fishing pole of his bent right there double. I saw it wasn't no, it wasn't no mud turtle. Yeah, that fishing pole of his going up and down the creek like that, and the line was a, looked like a steam was a flying off of it. It was a going so fast. And then once in a while, that big fish would come out of there. It was the biggest fish I ever seen. And I could see right then that Johnson was going to lose that big fish if I didn't help him. Well, they wasn't nothing I could do. I was all excited. You know, yeah. I just jumped right out in the middle of that creek. That's what you done. Clothes and all. <laughs> I was excited. Just jump there. Just jump right out there and see if I can land that fish for But now I forgot about my $50 gold watch and a $20 bill that I always carried in the hip pocket of the motor house. Well, that big fish got away. And honey, it was a big one. It was our uh, biggest fish I've seen in a long time. And it was Johnson's fault, too, by the way. That <laughs> and that night, when I got back home, I missed my $50 gold watch and that $20 bill. You know, I was telling you about it, I had my yeah, head pocket. Yeah, well, and I went back down there the very <laughs> next morning to see if maybe I could find it. thought maybe I dropped it on the bank. But I never. <laughs> But I was back down there a couple of days later. I was going to catch me one of them big fish. And I did. <laughs> I guess I caught the biggest fish. Right, guys, it was the biggest fish ever caught out of the green hole. And it was probably the, well, it was the biggest fish I know of caught out of the Moxon Creek. <laughs> the big old lunker headed bass. It was a big. And you know what I found wrapped around the gills of that fish? I found my $50 gold watch. <laughs> and you know what else I found when I took that fish home and cut it open? That's exactly right. I found my $20 bill. And, and what amounted to exactly six and three quarter percent interest in silver coins? <laughs> I don't know no stories like that. I'm not kidding. 
I used to raise chickens one time. I do know they're the nicest thing on earth. You know? <laughs> but you ate them. Well, I don't. If I can, well, well, they'd eat ham if they got a chance. I guarantee <laughs> they would. That's true. <laughs> I don't know nothing about that kind of fishing, neither. <laughs> I can tell you a story about luck, I guess I could. Well, that sounds good. It's a, you know, uh, it's a... Tell us a luck story. Get all you see, it's, it it's, luck. it's a story about my sister Ethel, so it's about, it ain't about me, and it, and it ain't, it's a... Uh, so what it is, see, <clears throat> my sister, see, Ethel was the youngest of the children. Uh, she was married three times. And she, uh, uh, no, I didn't say that was the lucky part. I didn't. <laughs> What was that? Oh, yeah. She was married three times, like I said, and she married her a coal miner every time. And that, well, I tell you what's the truth. Up, up, the, up the house, they ain't hardly nothing but coal miners. And if you marry, you're liable to marry one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you marry something else. And then, <laughs> then you might be better off with coal miners. Yeah, you don't know what you're going to do. Yep, although, I, like I said, she. She first married Clyde Blanton, that's what it was. Clyde and me, we was We was buddies, me and Clyde. We, we, uh, we went to school together, me and Clyde did, up to the sixth grade. Figured I got there ain't nothing else we can learn. <laughs> <laughs> we quit. <laughs> Clyde was a good boy. He was a, he was a good boy. He, I liked him a lot. I did. I, I, I fess up. I did. I liked him. He, I introduced him to Ethel. I was the very one day. I did. I take credit for that, buddy. That's a good marriage. It was. <laughs> While they took to each other like, oh, well, I tell you, honey, they had a bunch of children just like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like to go visit, you know. I was down at the house one day, and I was visiting. I was sitting there talking to Clyde at the table. We sat there, and little old young went crawling by there, just a little and the daddy. And I looked over. I had never seen that young one before. Yeah. <laughs> well, I said to Clyde, just to joking him. You know how you get to joking him. I said, I looked at that young one, and you know, I, where Ethel could hear me. And I said, well, Clyde, son, when do you go to work? <laughs> you see what I was getting at, don't you? <laughs> Well, she didn't take nothing, about her. She's feisty. She was. I was just joking, Clyde. You see, I... He was awful good to work on. I was just... For you see, one day he did... He went to work, and... Uh, he didn't come... He didn't come home that day. There was a, a, a rock fell on him. Didn't die. He didn't die right away. He, it took him you know, a couple of days to die. But he died. He's a good boy. Ethel, she took it. I mean, she took it hard, but she went to her bed. But now a woman by herself, now what's she going to do? People talk and say stuff, but they ain't none of their damn business. I'll tell you what, dude. A woman alone with young ones, what's she going to do? Ethel got married again, that's what she did. And she got a good boy. Grand, Granny Carter was his name. Yeah. His name was Granville Carter, you know. Or we called him Granny. <laughs> but he didn't mind. He, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was a, he loved them young ones. He loved them young ones. I mean, like they was his own. See, he did. Um, I, I tell you what he used to do. He got to where he'd go off to work. You know, he worked up in coal mines. He'd, uh, he'd come home at evening, 
and he had his lunch buckets, you know, and after he'd eat his dinner and all that stuff, he'd, he'd take that old wax paper and stuff and he'd stuck it down the bottom and then he'd get like maybe a snicker bar or something in the store and he'd get him a raisin cake or maybe an orange or whatever, and he, whatever it was. He'd stick it down in the bottom of that thing and then he'd bring it home with his dinner bucket and he'd just bring his bucket home, set it up on the table like he always done, you know. Took him youngins about a week to figure that out, you know. But he went and he did. He coming. Sit that damn bucket down on the table. I got he's just like a bunch of ants in a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> they hit that there damn bucket, that wax paper go this way. Sometimes they done eat what they done eat for they know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he loved them children. He, I, he just always was doing stuff for them like that, you know. Him and Ethel, they never had no young ones. <laughs> they wouldn't even marry long enough. I told you. He worked in the coal mine. It was a piece of slate that fell on him and it killed him dead outright. Well, Hazel took to her bed again. And she wouldn't eat. I go up to I go up to see her and I tell her now you got to eat something. She just look up at me and just smile at me, you know that smile at me. I told her you better quit that smile and start eating. That's what you better do. <coughs> I didn't think we was gonna get her out of that bed. It took a marriage to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you three times. She married a fellow by the name of Bill Lester. Bill Lester was his name. His name was Wig. We called him Bill. He didn't like it. <laughs> I, I just tell you, I, I don't, I ain't one. I just speak plain and I just say what I think. I just never did care for Bill Lester and I can't help it. The man didn't have no sense of humor, I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you why I know, I didn't know. See, when this year marriage got started, we figured if we could get this thing off to a good start, you know, get a good head of steam on it, maybe this would make the journey, you know? <laughs> so we just figured out, God, there ain't no way to get a head of steam up like having a party. And I was looking for a head of steam at the time. <laughs> We, we was drinking there at that party. I'll tell you what we was doing. You might try this sometime. I can, we was mixing that grapefruit juice and moonshine. <laughs> now, that right there is a new experience for you if you ain't never tried it. Because, <laughs> see, they ain't neither one of them things will kill the taste of the other. <laughs> you got to want to drink, buddy. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Now, some people talk about, I like to drink. I am good at it. <laughs> and I think a man ought to do what he's good at. <laughs> and I was I was drunk and I was just joking with Bill. I was about three quarters. No, hell no, I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but I didn't mean nothing back. See, and I was just talking to him and I was at the party there and I thought everything was going on. I thought since we were 10, I just... God, I said, I just, all I done was I got him over in the corner. And I said to him, I said, uh, hey, look here, Bill. Don't it look like maybe you ought to quit working in the coal mines? You see what I was getting at, don't you? <laughs> I mean, what was every one of Ethel's husbands getting killed right there in the mines? Hell, buddy, I'd have started pumping gas. <laughs> Bill didn't think that was funny. <laughs> He got killed in the same night. I told him, I told him, I said, no, it's got nothing to do with you. I told her that. Now, these people die in the mines all of the time. And a slate fall or a rock fall, it don't make no difference. It's, it's, a, it's, I told her it's one of them coincidental things. That's what I told her. It's an accident, girl. <coughs> she 
she took to her bed. She wouldn't eat. She wouldn't sleep. She'd lay there all night and just stare. It got to where that, that old doc had to come and, and he'd shoot her in the arm before she could even get any rest of the night. One day after he'd come to give her a shot, it was about one o'clock he left. Mama was staying down there with her, and, and Mama said that Ethel started in the hall. And when she went in to see what was going on, she said Ethel was trying to sit up in her bed, and she was pointing over toward the doorway, and she said she seen her husband. And she said they looked just exactly like the day that she last seen them, and there was all three standing right there. Well, Mommy finally got her quieted down back in the bed. That evening when I come in from work, Mom, she told me about it, and I told her, don't to worry about it. It's just that old dope. That stuff will make you crazy. Just, it'll be all right. But the next day, come up one o'clock again. <laughs> Ethel said in the clock. At the time Mommy got from the kitchen into the bedroom where she had been, Ethel had done crawl out of her bed and she was trying to get over yonder toward that door case and then she said now she seen her husband's and they shouted no and there was everyone standing right there and there was granny and clyde and bill and all <coughs> said they was uh emotional to her come on well Like to scare my mom like today. And she she got Ethel quiet down and she finally got her back into the bed and she said, Ethel, just shake it. And she she told her hush now and then quiet himself down there. Hey, nothing over there. And Ethel just smiled, you know, like she did. She just smiled. Mom just <coughs> and told her it's okay. Not to worry. She know what it was. She know that it was a sign. And she was meant to follow it. And they wouldn't nothing could be done about it. And then she just uh, smiled, right at Mama like that, just smile, let her be. And uh, my sister Ep, she died. We buried her up to the last of the cemetery on top of the hill. It's a, it's a pretty cemetery. And the big maple trees up there, and it's just about shady all the time. You can go visit the set if you want to. Of course, the CF was there <coughs> with Clyde. And Granny and, and Bill, they're all together. Mommy said, now that's the way that it ought to be. Family should be together forever. <coughs> and I'll tell you something. This, some people don't believe it, and I don't care, but I'll tell you how I know. <coughs> My mommy could see things. She had like signs and visions would come nights. Night dreams, some people will call it. Well, I'll tell you, now, two days before Ethel had ever said, all right, we're about to see her husband. Mom had already seen him. I come in from work one day, we was sitting right down at the supper table, and she told me, she said, son, I've just seen it all. I, and and she, she, said, she just knew it was a bad sign. Sister Ethel weren't there, we're going to get Will to talk to you.
did happen to my girl and we was at home now by ourselves. Ethel died in the arms of the baby. You know, it's true sometimes when folks have dreams or visions, they'll, they'll die so nightmares. I know my brother Clifton had a dream before he died. I'll tell you the whole story about my brother, Clifton Brandon. You may have heard of him. Clifton Brandon <laughs> was hung in Wise County, Virginia for killing his wife. But he got into even more trouble later he done that before the law called up with him. You see, he said that his wife had been unfaithful to him and he found out about it. He always said, now that woman is a witch if there ever was one. Of course, now he was in love with that other woman at the time. That was partly the cause too, don't you think? <laughs> The woman he was in love with was his cousin. Well, now she was his second cousin. She was John McCurry's girl, raised over there on Beaver Creek in Kentucky, just over the state line there. Ways. That's where Clifton hiked out to. Either he killed his wife in Virginia. You see, Mahalia's daddy, John McCurry, had a job for Clifton. And he took Clifton in gladly. But now that was what cost Clifton his life short. You see, old man Aunt Smore lived next door to John McCurry over there on Beaver Creek. Yeah, they was neighbors, but they had never gotten along much, no how. John claimed that ants had come in the night and killed off his new stock. Said he had poisoned his orchard fruit somehow. Yeah, poisoned it. <coughs> Uh, they never did prove it on him. I know that to be a fact. That John McCurry was poor. If he had a thing against anybody, he'd say nothing about it. But he'd sure not forget it. I see right then. He could Clifton to get rid of old man Hans more for him once and for all. Well, no, it wasn't long after Clifton got there that he shot Hans Moore in the back while he was riding on his horse, and he fell to the ground dead. Now, everybody got stirred up over that. I ain't the devil. devil. Bunch of men got out on horses and went out after Clifton. But Mahalia, while Clifton hid up in the log house, Mahalia, she got this old rifle gun, and she went out to the orchard. And when them fellers showed up after Clifton, she shot till they had to ski down. Or get shot. So them fellers left out there and went back to get them some more men. For his job of killing that poor man. John Carey gave Clifton a few dollars in money, his old rifle gun. And Mahalia, his girl. See, no, Clifton was in love with Mahalia. So late that night, Clifton and Mahalia, they left out of John's house and they headed off down towards the river. The law was right on her heels. The next night, there's in some bushes. There's waiting for an old river boat to come. There's a going to get on it. Well, when the whistle for the old boat blowed for the bend up above them just a little ways, oh, they felt sure of beating the law then. But it must not have been meant to have been that way. For as they stepped out of the bushes... Well, the law nabbed him. And Clifton wound up back at Wise in the jail. <laughs> Now, while Clifton was there in that jail, he sung and he prayed so big and so loud that you could hear him all over town. <coughs> Clifton loved to sing. Oh, honey, he could sing good. Sang so pretty. But I tell you now, I never really known him to pray before. <laughs> I went up to see him there while he was in that jail. And I told him, I said, Clifton, when they take you out there to hang, run. <laughs> well, you see, now, I figured he was better than getting hung. But he told me no. 
He said, I will not run, Polly. He said, I have got to hide. He said, Jesus Christ walked by my butt the other night in a dream that I had. And he looked over my way. And he told me. He said, Clifton, you deserve to die. You must hide. So you see, Polly, there just ain't no getting away from that. <laughs> It was on the 10th day of August that Clifton was hung. He ate a big breakfast that morning. Shaved, cleaned up. He told my man Henry to get him some gators. You know gators like they wore back then? Well, he got them. Clifton put them on. At 2 o'clock p.m. they come, and they just tuck a window out of the jail. And they placed a guard outside the window out there on the roof. And then they put Clifton out there on the roof beside the guard where everybody could wipe and wise could come and look up there. Hey, look at that. Right there's the man what's going to get hung right up there. But then, Mahalia, she walked out there on the roof. And she stood right out there beside Clifton and let everybody in the crowd have a good look at her, too. Clifton's behavior went with Clifton all the way, as far as she could. She broke down, though, on the way to the scaffold. Now, it hurt your feelings to see how it happened. There's outside there on the wall. And Mahalia got weak in one of her knees and slid down. Well, Clifton took hold of her arm and he told her, he said, get up. This is sure no time for such as this. And he pulled her up. And they went on a little bit further. She did that four or five times. And then they reached that scaffold. And she went right up them steps with him. She went right on up into that enclosure where that rope and the trap and Everything was. But there they let her tell him goodbye. And they made her go back outside and down with the crowd. <coughs> While he was in that enclosure, Clifton told the sheriff and the others what was there as officials and witnesses. He said he wanted to look at that trap door. He said he'd never seen no trap door before. <coughs> so he walked over and he studied where he was going to be standing. And then they put him on that trap door and they tied his hands and they tied his feet. They placed that black cap down over his head and his shoulders. And it was then that he asked his lawyer, who was standing there next to him, ask him, feel his pulse, see, was he all right? Uh, he took Clifford's hand and he told him he was. Then the rope was placed around Clifton's neck. And the sheriff said, Clifton Brandon, your time is up. May God have mercy on your soul. And he pulled that lever. And it sprung the cap. It was on hinges. And down Clifton fell with a thud. <coughs> he jerked and twisted once or twice, they told me, but now it was all over. It had broke his neck. <laughs> now it was about a week after that. Clifton come to me in a dream. And he told me. He said, Polly, I'm all right. So you see. 
That's the whole story. Bright morning stars are rising. Bright morning stars are rising. Bright morning stars are rising. Day is a breaking in my